Welcome to a, a proposal teardown. I have my friend here, Travis, uh, from Panda Doc or Mr. Panda, as uh, <laughs> as you'll probably see him on social. The dude is crazy when he goes crazy with it. So uh, hopefully everyone's having a great day. Uh, let us know in the chat where you're tuning in from and what's going on. And let's let's ask a fun question, Travis. You not you weren't ready for this. I'm gonna ask you a fun question here. What is your favorite candy? I, this might be controversial. Like, I'm a big movie goer, but I, bro, I love milk duds and snow caps. Snow caps? You know what snow caps are? I don't know what that is. No, <laughs> what? Dude, what the snow caps are the, snow like, oh, you just made, you made that up. You made that up. <laughs> There's no way. What the heck is that? What's up, Marcello? What's up, Brandy? Good to see you in the chat. Yeah, snow caps are like basically dark chocolate covered chips with like little white sprinkles on them. Yeah. Um, like, like ball sprinkles and it's just it's nothing fancy they're just really yummy i don't know why i think I just picked it up as a kid what about you what all right all right um my favorite is sour patch kids easy my wife would agree with you it's 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 her goaded candy She's and like, now they have the watermelon ones so they're like even better <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm all about some sour patch kids. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for that. Cool. All right, y'all. So what we're gonna do here today is we're doing a proposal teardown. We have a proposal that someone has written. We've obviously doxed everything, so you won't know what the company is, but we will go through it in real time and show you how to write them. And so for everyone tuning in, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we're gonna be getting right into it and. I want to throw this out here for you all because this this part is also important as well because we want to make sure that we understand it. Uh, from a scale to one to three, one being like I'm just getting started or not the best, and three being I'm great at writing proposals. What would you say? So on a scale to one to three, one being yeah I'm I'm okay at it. Like I'm like I'm just I'm just getting started. Three being a great at proposals. One to three. What would you rate yourself at writing proposals? And then we'll get into it and provide some feedback. But obviously, we'd love to hear from people's perspective where where they're at. Can I rank myself? Go ahead, go ahead. I think I'm a two. So like I work at PandaDoc. I'm on the marketing team, the content team. I'm not like a an onboarding specialist or a customer success manager, but I, I have been working in marketing for close to 10 years. I've had to put together some proposals here and there, and I've been using the PandaDoc product uh, for like side hustles and consulting gigs and things of that nature. Um, so I, I think I'm a two when it comes to creating a proposal inside of PandaDoc. Okay. I put, I put myself at a two. I don't think, I don't think I'm like three. Oh my God. Like, but I think two, probably 2.2. 2, maybe if I had to add in a little bit of extra juice to it, right? 2.2 <laughs> uh, 2 there. Um, but a lot of people looks like they're just getting started. So the, the goal here uh, for everybody listening in is if you are one, right? If you even put a two, uh, the goal is to get you from a one to a two. And I guess, Rochelle, for you, a two to a 2.2. .2. All right. <laughs> we'll get you a point two up. We'll, we'll help you out there. So, again, if the <laughs> goal here is if you all have questions, if you see anything that you want to, uh, to talk about, feel free to put it in the chat and we will go into it. Uh, but, Travis, what? let's pull up the screen. Let's go into it right here. Let's do it. I had to give that shout out to Marcello. 2.2 <laughs> level up. Let's get it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and share screen. You'll, you should see it pop up. Um, and then you should see um, Morgan and I in the, in the bottom right corner. But I'm going to be kind of screen sharing. And Morgan, I'm going to let you kind of walk us through. Like, this is an actual proposal from a PandaDoc customer. Now, I did remove any identifiable information just because it's secure information and we didn't want to do anything, you know, not cool or kosher. But this is a, I honest to God, PDF that somebody had been using and especially used on May 22nd of 2019. And then our customer uh, success team and our onboarding specialists worked with this customer to um, bring it into PandaDoc. And that's kind of what I'm going to do today. So all I did was download this as a uh, docx file, a Word doc, um, and then drag and drop it into PandaDoc. And this is what it looks like. I'm now able to like edit things, um, but I'll scroll through and we can kind of take a look. Uh, looks like we've got the cover page here or some sort of just like introduction with the date. Looks like the first section goes over scope and pricing. And, and Morgan, like, feel free to stop me at any time if you want to like. 
Yeah. Give them the overview and then we'll go back up. Okay. Looks like they go into some pricing here. It looks like they talk about the different tiers that they're going to offer. And I think they, they have this as like a tier one. So this is a web hosting or web maintenance agency. That's who's creating this proposal for a client. I named them Hey Jude and the company is The Beatles. Um, our fake company that Morgan and I started is Prestige Worldwide for any stepbrothers out there. As we build this document template inside of PandaDoc, um, it looks like they've got some pretty like, you know, interesting pricing here, like do quarterly, some prorated stuff, um, get more into the pricing details. Looks like they've got some payment options. We could also talk about automating some payments with, with PandaDoc integrations at some point. And then at the bottom here, it looks like they've got some lines for signatures. And normally this would be something that they would send as a PDF in an email, Morgan. Yep. And then that person would have to figure out a way to sign it, whether that's like print it, write with a pen, <laughs> scan it with their Who's phone. Printing? Do y'all even have printers out there? I don't even know in the chat has a printer. If you have <laughs> one, like that's, that's literally probably a relic. You could probably sell it on Amazon for like thousands of dollars. Cause like who actually has a printer nowadays? Like <laughs> for I'm a millennial. I have one millennial friend who's my age who does have a printer. Now, to be fair, he's a dad, he has kids, and sometimes he has to do like government forms or doctor's forms. So that's why he says he has it. But yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, and then as we get into here, this is more of like the terms and conditions, T's and C's, if you will. Um, I've got an idea of what to do with this to just make it a little bit more uh, easy on the on the recipient. And we can get into that. But it looks like it's it's about eight pages. When they upload it into PandaDoc, it'll be one really long page. And I will go over how to like add page breaks and stuff to just again make it more digestible. But that's the okay. overview, man. Let's okay. So let's let's start from the top. This is one of the most important things when you do a proposal that is not here. All right. So if you scroll down, Travis, a little bit and go to the scope and pricing. Okay, so they have the scope here, but here here's here's the problem. They're not, they're not addressing what the problems were, current state, future state, right? I mean, some of y'all probably read Gap Selling, and I'm not, I'm not going to go into, into the whole spill that what Keenan does it the best there. But what I'm saying is that when you have a proposal, you have to tell people, okay, what, what are we trying to solve before you tell them what you're going to do? You have to reiterate that. So one of the most important things for everyone to remember if you're creating a proposal is the proposal is not for the person you're sitting to. It's the person that you haven't met yet. I'm going to say that one more time because it's really important for you to remember that is the proposal is not for the person you're sending it to. It's for the person that you have not met yet. And so if that is the case, that means that we have to articulate what are the problems that we agreed on up to this point that you're solving? Um, and it could be anything, right? I mean, from a sales perspective, it could be like you're increasing their revenue, you're increasing their cold call conversion, right? Maybe it's like increasing their social lift or in, in this scenario, what they're doing, it's like, a whole thing around their environment and, and their website, et cetera. It looks like this on there. So you need to talk about what the problems were. Like, did they not even have a website? Is the website they built not good, right? What happened before you get to the scope and pricing? So for everyone here, uh, if you're taking notes or whatever, maybe I would, I would tell you that you need to figure out what are the problems, right? What are the challenges that these individuals are going through before we go ahead and start talking about what the scoping is and, you can do that in a multitude of different ways. I find that what I'll do is just say current state, and then I, I'll list like maybe two to five things, depending on how much it is. Three typically is the best, but two to five is like optimal. And then at that point, it's like future state. So like, what are they looking to accomplish? Then we start talking about what the deliverabilities are from there. But we, we can't do that unless we focus on the current state in the future state so if anyone in the chat wants to further elaborate on that or again you get it shout out to davis who said noted but travis i don't know if you have anything we want to add to that i think that's extremely important and one of the things i i like to do occasionally as well is go over the proposal on a zoom call we do have a zoom integration with pandadoc so you can <clears throat> you can actually bring up the proposal and walk through it right have it be more of like a living breathing document not just something you send to the client sometimes where they don't have context about it. And by adding both the scope and what you're trying to fix in terms of current state, future state, like you said, I, I think one of the best things you can do, especially with if you have the time, uh, hop on a call, 
just like like you and I are, where you're screen sharing, you're walking through it. You can say like, hey, based on our discovery call and our first demonstration, here's what I heard. And that's why we put this in here at the top of what it is we're going to work on, because you guys are struggling with X, Y, and Z, and we want to fix X, Y, and Z for you. And here's how we're going to do that. And then you can get into the scope, like here's how we're going to do that. Yeah, because if you just hop right in, it's like, okay, cool. And again, could you have agreed upon that on the discovery call? Sure. Could you have already had that in an email somewhere? Sure. But goal is, is that when you're looking at this, you want people that have not even been in the conversation yet to realize that, oh, this is what they're doing. This is where they're going. Very critical point for everyone here to, again, take note of and to take action on. So again, if I'm looking at this from the very beginning, we need to put that uh, across the board. Absolutely. Okay. So cool. while you're talking, the only thing I did, if the audience was like, what's Travis doing on the back end? Let's create a cover page, added in an, uh, our fake logo, just something to be a little bit more presentable that when you send it over to them and they open it, you know, via email or via link, um, there are two ways to like send a document right now, currently with PandaDoc, you can either email it to them. They'll get an email from PandaDoc and saying like, Travis and Morgan created a proposal for you. Or you can send them a link if you're going through the deal and the DMs, you know, on LinkedIn or you're, you've been texting about the deal, you can send them that link that way. Um, but this is just a, a simple cover page uh, to say, like, who did you create it for uh, or who was it created by and who is it prepared for? And the, the only thing I'll mention here before you get back into it, Morgan, is just like, what are these highlighted variables inside of the Panadoc tool? We have what are called variables. So that when you're creating your master copy template for all the proposals you're sending out to your, your future customers, this saves you a ton of time by basically inserting it once and then being able to just click a button and then it highlights the whole document. Anytime you mention that person's name, that person's company, your name or your company, think of them as just like uh, tokens throughout your document where you don't have to go through here and you're like, oh shoot, I made a copy of the proposal I made for a customer last week. Mm -hmm. They're not, hey Jude, and you've got the other client's name in there. You're looking like a duck. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like what's going on here? Snake. So it's just an easy way when you're building, again, your master template, your master copy of your proposals. Variables are a huge time saver. You just come in over here and you can see there's a bunch for the client, everything from their company to their phone number. You can pull these in from a CRM if you're using one. If you're more of an entrepreneur, solopreneur, and you're not using an expensive CRM like HubSpot or Salesforce, you can create those um, contacts inside of PandaDoc, or you can just type them in once when you're creating the document, and it autofills for all of them. So that's my spiel there on, on variables. Good stuff. No, I, I like that you're doing that background. We definitely don't want it to make it look dull. So again, we want to do that. And, and another thing here as well, you don't have to do this every single time, but I do these in my proposals before you go into the current state, future state part before that you want to at least address that person. Right. Again, like you said there, but you could be like, Hey, whoever your point of contact is, let's say, let's say it's Jude, right? You'd be like, Hey Jude, thank, thanks so much for uh, everything so far and appreciate you giving me the insights, you know, looking forward to continuously uh, working with you here. So I like, I like to call that out uh, in the beginning, because again, someone that is not someone that you have not talked to is going to look at this proposal. So you want to show that you and Jude or whoever is already having a good relationship uh, from there in the beginning. So that's what I would call that here as well before we get into now the next part, which is the scope and the pricing. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so, so yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, man. I was, no, I was going to say is that like, again, we don't, we don't know what happened in these sales conversations. I'm just giving you all something to think about when you are in the sales cycle. So I think everyone here is a, probably an AE SDR. You can let us know in the chat exactly what you are. What you want to be thinking about is what is the importance level of each deliverable? So in a sales cycle, one of the best questions you can ask is what is your decision criteria. So you can always ask that. So you understand like, you know, what they're deciding on. So like, if they're deciding on X, you want to put that there, but also you want to ask is like, what is like the most important things for you to accomplish uh, at the end of this service or at the end of this project? Right. So then you can figure out what that is. So by, I'm saying all that is in whatever they say is like the most important, you want to put those first as the deliverables, just from a 
psychoanalysis standpoint because they're going to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Like I remember saying that was the most important. It's number one. So when you're doing that piece or on that proposal around, again, you see that right there with the deliverables, you want to add the things first that are the most important and applicable. So again, if we pull this back up, you're going to see like at least in plan uh, tier one or the scope itself, the scope itself. Yeah, if we, if we, if we drill into that real quick, you're going to see uh, all the stuff that they're talking about. You want to make sure that the things that they mentioned are the most important are the first thing that you put in there, right? Uh, and that's a key. That's a key element. So, I believe that they probably did, but this is just something I want to double click on because again, we were in the sales cycle. But it's something for you to remember when you're doing this. Yeah, and for the context of this, if people are like, "Well, I don't know what we're looking at here," I just took some time to read through this. So it looks like basically, if we go back up to this again. This is a, a website migration and maintenance proposal. So this may not be super applicable if you uh, you know to you if you're like this is great Morgan and Travis, but I don't do web hosting and maintenance. Like okay, no problem. But it looks like basically it's a two part project, and that's very common in consulting, and that's very common in a lot of freelance work where you're doing multiple things for a client, and so scoping those out and being very detailed. Another kind of pro tip: if you're a freelancer, or solopreneur, or entrepreneur. Don't be afraid, I think, in my opinion, to ask for some sort of like 50% deposit up front because it can be really frustrating when you're working on a project and you have, you, you, you're you like, when am I going to get paid? I put in so much work for this client and it feels a little bit better in the soul if you asked for 50% up front and it looks like this is what they did. They were like, you're going to give us $538 upon the signing of this agreement and then we'll get started to work. Uh, you know, on It looks like there's a two part here of, they're going to restore and migrate the website and then maintain the website. So that's what you're seeing here of just like, um, and it looks like it's, oh, we'll maintain it for $117 per quarter. And they've got some other things in here, but I just wanted to clarify like w what that was there. Yeah. If we go, actually, that's really important. If we go back up there, uh, if you see it's done by the steps, right? So anytime that you're doing that, you want to show people, Hey, that we're going to go from here to here. Uh, if you could, if your service does that, great right you want to be able to label it out and show people exactly what's going on even if you drill a little bit more into this as well like you could look this look at this from um i'll leave a different perspective is that if you're doing it by <clears throat> section 1.1 and then section 1.2 right letting people know how long that actually will take is it looks like it just says here's you can get people ahead to take x amount of weeks or it looks like inside of it there's people you know what's going on but if you could say this section takes but understanding too because someone will probably look at this proposal and be like this point two point one as long as the project take which will probably uh, and then yeah if you're doing anything as well like 50 did i lose you i'm here i'm here you there there we go yeah i'm here Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm here. So the last thing I heard you say was so, making making sure you put out the timing of like how long things are going to take because that's super important. That's a question that comes up all the time <laughs> when you're working on a proposal. Is like, this is great. Yeah, you just want to put that next to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like they're gonna ask, they're gonna ask. So you want to put it there. I think one thing that I might do differently here instead of how the client uh, had originally done this, uh, Morgan, is if I wanted to get a little bit more nuanced and just make it a little bit easier for somebody to look at is I'm just going to add a little text block here and then let's add a pricing table. Oh, wait, let me go back and do this here. Do a pricing table on a new page here. And what, one of the cool things about PandaDoc is this is great. This is a great start, but it's a little bit hard for the recipient to like, look at this. If I were, if I were to get sent this, my brain would immediately be like, bro, you're asking so much from my cognitive load right now. Like, can you just simplify it? And so one of the ways I might do that is with a pricing table coming in here, I'm going to go ahead and just disable this. That's if you wanted to connect it to a CRM, but the first part of this project, if I can remember correctly, was restoration and migration. And I'm just going to put that in here. Oh. Let's see. Undo real quick. Didn't like when I copy and pasted it. It did not. So let me disable this again. 
I'll write it in this time. Oh, it didn't like it again. I'm going to do another pricing table down here. Okay. Restoration and migration. And I spelled migration wrong. Okay. And then this is where I would put in the description of what it is. And then if I want to do more, like the, that second product, I'm going to go ahead and insert another row below. And I'm pretty sure that one was maintenance. So we'll come in yep. here and I'll write maintenance, if I can spell that correctly. Good Lord. Um, and then we can say like, okay, this was going to cost $538. And then this one is going to cost, I think they said $117. So just something to make it a little bit more like user friendly. And again, this is a really basic one. You spend a little bit more time. I don't want to like bog you down and slow you down, Morgan, but no, this is good. a way where you, where you could just make it uh, a little bit easier to read. Um, and it looks like right now it's in Polish Zolites. We'll switch it to dollars. Um, you can add in a little tax here. You can add in discount. It'll auto. Like, let's say if it's like, hey guys, if, you, um, if you're able to sign within the next 10 days, we'll give you a 10% discount but it's a time-based incentive for you. Um, in here, you can also add in what the description are. So you could you could copy and paste all of these different things and put it in the pricing table. Um, or if you wanted to just keep it as is, you could do that as well and just kind of have the scope be like this. This, this might be how I, I go about building this page. Um, I think I think as you're building it, I think it's smart a smart move, right? Because like you said, a lot of it is clunky and you're right. So if it was a table and I could just quickly absorb it, anyone else, again, right? We don't know. Some people we don't know. They could absorb it. They don't get stuck in this section. Exactly. That's the goal and too. You don't want to get people to get stuck, right? Because then they spend all this time trying to figure that out and they didn't even get to like, <laughs> like the other stuff that's important. And here, one of the things I really like when I send out proposals as well to, to some, some of my clients is I'm able to make it optional. So it's an interactive pricing table. So I can say like, hey, you know, you don't have to do maintenance with us if you don't want to. You, you can just do just the restoration and migration. But I've noticed that when I work with clients, it's always nice to give them options. And you can talk about it, like I said, on that Zoom call where you're going over the proposal, you can send it to them. But I've been able to upsell more services this way and make more money as somebody sending over proposals. So I can say like, hey, for maintenance, let's start out with six months of maintenance. And then as you can see, it auto populates the, the pricing table there. But you can let them decide what they want to do. And that's that's a cool little feature. I just wanted to point out. Real, I like real quick. that. I like that. All right. So I think I think I think now we can go to the payment details and. Even even here, you I mean, you could even do the same thing you just did, right? I mean, because it also feels like it's 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 clunkyville. Um, because yeah, I feel like you could do a table again. What do you think? I think this is what I would do here again. Yep, I would honestly, I would honestly just do the same thing. And if if uh, another thing here that might might have made this one easier as opposed to a pricing table. So if we're like, all right, cool. Actually, we want the pricing table to be a little bit farther down. No problem. Let's bring it down to this next page. If I can, thanks for bearing with me, guys. I'm not the, like I said, I'm not the world's best Pandoc expert. I'm still kind <laughs> of a novice. But what I might do is just add a actual table. And this might be like where I put in some of this stuff. So. And, and, as, and as Travis is doing that, like we're, we're putting in these tables, but also not everything needs to resort to a table, by the way. I just feel like based on the, if it's really, really clunky and you can do that, absolutely do it. But don't, you don't have to do it every single time. Like, I think that's important for everybody to know. Absolutely. Because then you have table, then it's this table overload. It's like, okay, like, look, we don't even do that over and over again. I think this is going to look a lot better. And if anyone, as we're doing this, has questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. Uh, we're obviously open to answer all the questions here that you'll have. Uh, but Travis has built, built this table. And really, if we look at the pricing point, right? And then we also look at what we saw for the payments. Putting these in tables is just easier for people to go through. Boom. Okay, that makes sense. And then to move on, right? And a lot of people here will, you know, might might skip this part and just put in the information and 
make it clunky. You don't, you don't want that. So we wanted to call that out to make sure it's super simple for people to look at, super simple to take action on and you know, whatever that may be. And then as we're looking at the next section that we're about to go into here in a minute, you're going to see as Travis is cleaning this up, this will allow us to even make modifications if we need to later. Uh, I like the fact that we can go in here and, and the client can actually add some pieces too, just in case it's like, you know, we want to change that up. So I think that's another good additional piece too. All right. So to go back through and again on the left hand panel here, you can kind of break down and see your pages one at a time. We've got our scope, right? So this is showing them what we're actually going to be like working on. And we've got our pricing. And again, I think this just is a cleaner look. Yep. Um, this just has like the payment schedule. And I think we can actually just get rid of that. Bring that up here. And then this is just suggesting payment options. And the good part about PandaDoc is I'll just, again, like I mentioned it earlier, I teased it earlier. If you want to configure one of your payment gateways, whether you take credit card, ACH, um, I personally set up a free Stripe account and then connected my Stripe account to my PandaDoc account for free. It took me less than five minutes to do all of this. The, honestly, the longest part of, of like setting up the gateways was the, the, two-step authorization of like, we're going to send you a passcode to your email and, and all that. <laughs> so basically the way a payment works is once, and we'll get to the fillable fields, but once everything is signed and the document is completed, the recipient, your customer will be prompted immediately within the same interface um, to process payment with whatever you've set up and agreed upon. So whether they're doing it via PayPal, whether they're doing it through Stripe, whether they're doing it through whatever, they'll enter in that information and pay and there is no better feeling than seeing like a notification of like signed sealed delivered and then payment all at once there's no like hey we invoiced you it's gonna take three weeks and you're just like i, I need my money now man. yeah so you're like give me that money what are y'all talking about yeah i know 100 and uh let's go so if, if y'all have questions feel free to put in the chat we'll answer them so arrow's got a question here um what do you mean by people getting stuck? Can you speak to examples of how they might get stuck and how would you prevent that? So what I mean by getting stuck is you just think about like, sorry, you just talked about it, but information overload. So if there's too much information, people are more prone to get stuck or they'll actually just exit and not want to deal with it. So if you again, if you send someone a massive email, right, with a lot of information, overload, people are like, okay, cool, I'll check that later. Or if you send someone a long text, they'll be like, that's a lot of information. I got to get out of here. So if you think about just the constructs of how people absorb information, you don't want so much information that's overwhelming and overloaded. They're going to get stuck. They're going to look at it. They're not going to understand it because it's too much and they might end up leaving the document. So that's an example of people getting stuck per se. There could be other ways depending on the person, but that's like a holistic example. And then how we're preventing that, that's what we're doing now. So we're creating these tables. So it's easier for people to look at it and it's easier for people to absorb it because if you make it very clunky, right, then that's how people get stuck. That's how they end up getting just, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. And then they retreat and then they shut it down. And that's not what you want. No, the idea is you want to create a streamlined process where working with you is easy. Saying yes to you is easy. And with a automated digital proposal where they can, they can review it agree with it, sign it and pay it all within five minutes from their computer, not opening up any extra tabs, God forbid, printing something and faxing it. Hell no. Um, I think that's one of the things, right? Like we talk about uh, sales velocity a lot and being able to move quickly so that the deal doesn't die. It's the same thing when you get to like, why would you have the last step of your sales process be clunky and cumbersome? Like yeah. working with you is easy to say yes to. And then hopefully renewing contracts with you is also easy to say yes to. Yeah. So um, while most, you're talking, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no I was always going to say is most people, even to comment on Eric, because I think this is a good point. So everyone listening in, this is something to take note of. Most buyers, most people that are buyers will, won't will move forward. And it's not because that they sometimes don't have the budget. It's not because that they... <clears throat> you know, don't have the, you know, access to go get it or whatever it may be. It's because they, you made them confuse or you had them stuck somewhere. So if you think about the buyer, there's millions and millions of tasks that they need to go execute on. So if you don't make it easy and simple and they get stuck, 
they're going to move on to the next thing that they need to go fix. So that's that's what we're talking about there. And I think it's a good it's a good clarification point. That's what we're talking about there and that getting stuck. Buyers won't buy because they're like, this is confusing. I don't get it. I'm stuck. I don't have time to figure this out. See you later. So the yep. more clean, cohesive, clear you can make it, the more clean deals you'll get. I'm just make that up for clean deals. Yeah. <laughs> like we want clean deals. We don't dirty deals. We want clean deals, Travis. <laughs> I mean, unless you're in like the cartel or the mafia, yeah. but we don't personally serve. Is there them. a link- LinkedIn mafia out here? <laughs> I think Max Cohen would be in charge of the LinkedIn mafia. <laughs> um, so one of the things I just wanted to point out here is when you create a template, you're automatically going to have a client as the signer, but you're going to want to make sure that you assign the sender so that you can sign an initial and date these as well. So I'm just, that's all you're seeing me do here. And I'm going to go back to just like some text fields. Actually, a cool little feature that you can do is is you can go to the settings here. Instead of enter value, um, you can just write name and do the same right here. So people know what the heck they're entering in there. And then one thing that I wanted to do as well was page break out actually that bad boy. And let's talk about our T's and C's because that's all of this like legal jargon text that nobody ever wants to read. Um, One of the things I recommend doing is creating like an actual separate document. So with Pandadoc, we can come in here. Let's come in here. Let me rename this as terms and conditions. And then I'm going to create a text block, go back to this guy and then while I'm doing this, because this is going to be like a little boring, but I do have to kind of like copy and paste a bunch of stuff. Do you want to walk through any best practices or ideas that you, Morgan, usually have when it comes to, because this can be really scary for people who are just getting started with a yeah. proposal that are like, I don't know where to get this or like, yeah. what should be, what should be in there? I don't know. How do Let's you just dive into it? Ar- Arrow's got some good questions. And if y'all have questions, like be like Arrow, you can drop it in there. And also as well, uh, for everyone that is listening in, if you're finding this helpful or insightful so far, let us know in the chat too. You want to make sure that we're giving you helpful information as you're sitting here hanging out with us. Uh, but uh, no. Ar- so the thing is like, I think it's called the, um, it's called the experts fallacy. I don't know if you've heard this Travis before. So the experts fallacy is essentially when you know something that you've done something a lot or you know something very well and you assume everyone else knows. And so in this scenario with this question, like, yeah, there's a lot of things where it's like, oh, yeah, that seems simple to you, but not to others. And people fall on experts fallacy because they don't they don't assume that other people hey, may not know this. So you have to share it. So that's that's what I put out there. Anyways, uh, to answer this question, when you're thinking about that piece, it's more so around tell asking people how much time do you spend on this thing right that's how you're able to actually get a lot of information out of people and, and get them to change so if i said all right i'm talking to old school leadership for example right and then they're like oh I, you know i don't want to do this new thing i don't want to implement pin i don't want to do all these different things okay cool so Instead of forcing them on like, hey, this is why this thing is awesome, feature benefits, et cetera, you could do that. But a better way of doing it is saying, okay, how much time does it take you to do this process today? Oh, well, this takes us like seven hours, eight hours, right? And then it's like, okay, well, again, it might take us you know, a couple of weeks or a, a month to get this change. But what if we could get this from five weeks five days, five hours, whatever you're doing, how long it takes you to do something. What if we could reduce that to a day, two hours, a minute, et cetera. And then it's like, here's the next step of that. It's if you were to get that time back, what are the other things that you could do, right? That is highly important that this process is slowing you down with. So that changes it, right? So every, every executive has an executive bonus that they get at the end of the year. So if you were able to show them a technology that gives them their time back to hit that bonus and focus on that rather than these other minutia things, they're going to be way more open to it. So it's all about positioning of getting them their time back and letting them know the sales velocity would not only get them their time back because they have to, their processes are old. So they're not actually able to get the data. They're not able to get certain things. It's delayed. So they can't be as actionable. They can't forecast as they want to because it takes too much time. 
But if I get their time back to do these certain things, right, and they were able to focus on it, right, they're going to see more success in the long run. So that's the way that, like, I think about these things. You have to position it and let them and let them understand um, that that it is. Uh, Arrow. So, so the thing is, like, yes, but also as well, it is their it is their time being wasted because you're positioning it as a, it's taking ex, it's taking them a long time to get the processes done, right? So because someone is taking a long process to get it done, it's they get delayed information, which is also their time wasted. Because if they were to get the information sooner, they could go focus on other things instead of being delayed. So that's the that's the way that I position that is that you actually are wasting your time because if someone's taking a long time to do it, the time that you get the information is longer, which means you are wasting your time because you're following up with this person. You're trying to figure out the information. You can't make certain adjustments and you can't make certain calls without the data in time. So it actually is wasting their time because you could get it sooner. But now you're just delaying time. You just wasted five weeks to try to get information. What could you have been doing for this five weeks of time because you didn't change this process? So the conversation changes completely. So yes, they're not doing those actions, but because someone isn't doing those actions faster, they're actually losing their time because of that. That becomes a different conversation. If someone is taking five weeks to do something, I just lost five weeks of decision time. That's a lot. No, Aaron, you're all good. That, I'm just, I'm, I'm pressing on the point, right? And I appreciate the follow up there. But that's like, that's like the way that would go down. So that's that piece there. Uh, so hopefully that helped to answer the question. Again, if you know any of your questions or proposal, throw it in. But I'm gonna give three tips here. As Travis is doing wizardry in the background, as y'all see it. But number one, when it comes to the proposal, uh, if you can, I talked about this in a post. Do a video proposal. That's a big one there. Do a video proposal. That's a huge key. Uh, to walk through a proposal is going to be game changer. Game changer. So when you walk through a proposal, some of you are like, okay, like, you know, what does that mean? You do a video overlay. You could do, there's a ton of video tools out there, right? You got the Vidyards of the world. You have Loom, right? Vouch. There's a lot of video tools. Whatever you decide to pick is whatever you decide to pick. In picking that tool you're going to go through and add context to the proposal already now someone can read a proposal and give interpret interpret it how they want to but the goal here is that when you do a video proposal right you want to be able to walk someone through and show each part of the proposal but travis you're going to show something about the video real quick yeah so one of the things that i've seen people do really well is they'll embed a video they recorded either in youtube vimeo wistia or vidyard walking through the, like, let's say this is really complex, right? So you send this to somebody and they're like, I don't know what the hell this is. You put together a 30 second video and saying, Hey, for the restoration, basically all we're going to be doing is taking a WordPress install from a theme forest like theme and then walking them through, like, just again, the stuff that's a little bit more complex. It gives you that really personalized touch and I think it's super powerful. I've used it before as well to just put a face to the name and show people that I'm legit. I'm not like a scammer. I'm not a weirdo. I'm a good person that just wants to help them. And going with that extra personal touch, it's like chef's kiss. And, and again, let's add to what I said. I'm going to say this over and over again. I hope this is like the one thing, if you don't get anything out of what you say is the proposal is not for the person you've been talking to. It's for the person you haven't been talking to. So again, to Travis's point, if someone hasn't gotten a call with you, let's say let's say the CFO is watching this, right? It could be one of the executives that you don't even know is actually a decision maker for whatever reason that you maybe missed out on it or you know that sometimes it happens. If I send a video and they see me talking through it, they're like, oh, you know, good energy, good person, et cetera. Those things play into a factor and they could, they'll know who you are, especially if you're selling a service or something like that. You definitely want This is like 100%. You should be just every time, every time. But even from a product standpoint, you want to walk people through certain things because you want to be able to say, hey, I know you saw this, but here's what this means. Or, hey, I had this image in here. Here's what that means. And that's number two is like images or graphs or charts. Anything you can add there is always great. If you have it, people love a good chart. People love some good data. So if you can show those things, people are going to be way more open to absorbing that information and commenting on that information. So it's another thing you can be doing as well. The third thing that I would add in terms of when you're doing these proposals and paying attention to is making sure that you do have some 
case. Uh, I would say just customer stories. It doesn't need to be like an actual legitimate case study. Show like, hey, when we did a project like this before, here's what we did for this person. Here's how we went about it. Here's what we did, et cetera, right? That's another way of, of taking action on this as well. So I'm giving you all the different components of how you can start thinking about proposals so far. But Travis, I know that you, oh, what up? <laughs> I know you've been building all this stuff in the background to so show us what you completed here. Yeah. So one of the things that I do is, so I run Panadox podcast and sometimes I'm reaching out to guests that are pretty well known. They're in very established organizations. And so they get invites and spam constantly. And so one of the things I do is when I send them a Panadox proposal, I actually record a video and then embed it into the proposal to do exactly what you said, which is in this case, this woman that I wanted to have come on my podcast she was working for the Major League Baseball team, the Tampa Bay Rays. And she was already inclined to say yes to me because I had a warm intro, but her team was like, who is this guy? Where does he work? So it was for the people who had, I had not been talking to at all. And they were like, oh, okay, I see what he's doing here. He wants to bring us on the show. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what he looks like. This is what he sounds like. And I just tried to put a, a you know captivating thumbnail, showing my podcast, showing their picture, showing me. And something that one in one minute, I was introducing myself talking about why I wanted them to come on the show, what they could expect and why it was easy to say yes to. So th that was a, a, just a marketing use case right, I sure. thought was cool to share. Um, and I, I, you can easily embed them in here. Um, the next thing I wanted to just say is like, this thing is ready, man. I, I didn't copy all of the terms and conditions and that would take me like 15, 20 minutes. I want to just, you know, do this for live stream purposes, but this thing is ready to go. This is our master proposal template for our website migration and maintenance services, we're ready to use this bad boy. And this is basically the workflow. You come in here and you say proposal template, uh, or instead of proposal template, you would say, you know, proposal for, hey, Jude, you've got me. I'm going to be the client, the sender. Let me see if I have Morgan's email in here. Well, I've got a bunch of other people, but I don't have you. Uh -oh. <laughs> is it Morgan Ingram at gmail.com? Uh, Morgan at MorganJIngram.com. Morgan at. Ah. There we go. And as, as this is going here, y'all can let us know how we do on the proposal in the chat. Uh, let's go on. But but we're about to show y'all the, com the completed copy here. Yeah, exactly. And so in this case, I didn't have an assigned company, but I can just do that right here and just call it. We're going to pretend that Morgan works for Hey Jude. <laughs> you can see my name auto-populated here with my company name, Prestige Worldwide. Um, I've got my pricing table here. And then this is ready for me to sign. And this is ready for Morgan to sign. And as I said earlier, when you send something, you can send it either via email you can do it via link or a third option is if you're out in the field, you can sign in person using a phone or an iPad or any kind of device like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and then this is your chance as well. If you want to, you know, make suggestions within the document, you can kind of go into suggesting mode as you can see it changes here and you can add your comments in a chat here. This is something like if I'm collaborating, you know, let's say Morgan and I are, are getting ready to pitch a big prospect and we want to make sure that, you know, we're on the same page, like, hey, Travis, we have $100 an hour here. Let's actually maybe switch that. We can all comment back and forth in the document. I don't have to like hop, you know, look at his Slack messages or emails or anything like that. We're all working out of the same tool. So just wanted to add that in there as a cool little feature. I love that. And yeah, y'all let us know what y'all think of this proposal uh, in the chat. Uh, we, we Brandy said it's beautiful, so we, we appreciate you. But let us know in the chat what you think there. And <clears throat> the main thing that you you see what we did is we made this very compact, we made it concise. I love that we embedded a video in here as well. There's some personality, uh, and that's the that's the goal here, y'all. Is that yes, you could send a proposal, and it could just be text and all those different things, and those things are you know that's a part of it. But what we did here is made it dynamic. We made it unique but also we added in some pieces that people could consume and absorb and actually oh this is interesting so that's the piece as well absolutely and so for those wondering the average proposal is usually about eight pages um we do have a uh, a blog article that tells you how to write a proposal with a step-by-step -step video it has your cover page number one your cover letter number two 
table of contents, number three, your executive summary, number four, number five is going to be your proposal and solutions page, six is pricing, seven about us. And then if you wanted to add as a bonus on another page, testimonials and social proof, that's a good way to use video as well is to add a customer testimonial inside of there. Um, and then your, just your agreement and your terms and conditions. So those are kind of the eight to nine pieces that are usually in a standard business proposal. That's not to say that it has to have all those things or that there isn't more you can add. The more complex a deal gets, if you're in the enterprise level, it could get up to 35 pages in your proposal. We never recommend going over 50 pages. Oh my and out of, <laughs> yeah, out of like the, um, you know, we've got 50,000 customers here at PandaDoc and we're constantly analyzing all of our proposals. But the average one that gets sent out, a business proposal has eight pages to it. So this one honestly only has four pages. That's okay. Actually, five pages. It was, again, for demonstration purposes, we're kind of going through this quickly. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. So as I share my screen here, I went to go hit send. As you can see, I have that payment option. It's saying, oh, you need to assign a payer. So what I'll just do is I'll go ahead and just get rid of the payment for now. Um, let me go ahead and do this. Go back to the commenting. Let's see. See if I can get rid of the payment. I want to go back to editing mode. Okay. Remove payment app. Go down there. Send. All right. And so this is basically, if I were to send this out, this is what it would look like. It comes with a um, subject line. I can uh, I can actually use save messages, which is pretty cool. So that saves even more time. So I can say like, hey Morgan. Welcome to Panadoc. I'm gonna spell your name wrong. Again. Gotta have those templates. There you go. Go ahead. And again, if I want to send reminders, if I want to be on top of whoever I'm sending this to, I'll remind them. One day's a little aggressive. I'll go three days and then I'll repeat every week until it's completed or expired. I would hit apply to save my email. I'm just gonna go ahead and send it. And then I'm gonna pull up in a new one what it would look like. So the document has been sent and now it's my time to sign this. You'll see that it goes into sent mode up here on the left that it's time to fill out and sign this bad boy. And this is basically what your end user would see. So I just wanted to show everybody. Um, I know we're, we're running out of time here, um, but I would hit the start. It would bring me down. Here's where I would type my name in. We can't, we can't see it. Cause I'm not sure on the right screen. That would be helpful, yeah. right? <laughs> Oh yeah, we gotta make sure everybody's good. <laughs> and as Travis is doing, if y'all have any final questions, right here at the last ten minutes, now is your time to ask any questions, whether proposal, sales, etc. I know we have a couple people tuning in here, so let us know if you do have any final questions. Uh, we're more than happy to answer them as we wrap up. All right, you should be able to see it now. We can. Um, this is this is like what your document looks like from your recipient's point of view. That's one of the biggest questions we get. Well, I want to know what my recipient sees. This is exactly what they see. They get an email, and then they click a button in that email again, or a link or in person, and then they see this screen, they can go to finish. It'll scroll right down to the part they need to get to. You're probably familiar with that. You can draw, type, upload, or just write in your signature. Y'all can see my sloppy signature there. Add the date. Do it again here for that terms and conditions that I reviewed so thoroughly with my lawyer, and then hit finish. And then boom, now it's on Morgan. I've done my part. The other person now needs to sign it. I usually will sign first when it comes to my uh, things that I'm sending out. So that way the ball is in their court. There's no uh, delay. So now it's like as soon as the recipient signs, if I've got my payment integration set up, they're also prompted to pay. And boy, that is a sweet moment when that Yeah, happens. you know, the, the, the payment comes through. You know, again, how could you not be excited about that? <laughs> That's it, man. So that's that's basically a, a sped up version. Again, we could spend a little bit more time. Somebody really wanted to see me going line by line to fix it, but um, that's that's what I've got from the Panadoc side. Good stuff. Well, uh, for everyone tuning in, you're going to see on the top left. If you want to see more information, uh, you can scan that QR code. You want to check out the blog, check out some stuff. Uh, definitely do that. And then as we have 10 minutes left here, uh, if anyone does have questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Again, anything proposal, sales related, uh, definitely do that. Shout out to Arrow. Uh, appreciate the great questions across the board. Uh, thank you for your time. And then shout out to Brandy. Uh, 
glad you uh, came through. And then Lindsay, yeah, it is all about video. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. And Lindsay, we'd love to hear, you know, how you use video, but uh, I know a lot of people probably are hesitant or like, oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, it, it just allows for people to really see your personality. Like you're probably going to hop on a zoom call with this person anyways, at some point, even if you did not meet them or you meet them in person. Right. So the thing is at the end of the day, like, make sure that you're leveraging video as much as you can because people really want to see who you are what are you about right what are you going to go out there and do uh and so that's what i would tell y'all at the end of the day is like really take the time to understand how to do video how to go about it and, and how to be successful in that so that's that's what i would say there uh but travis i don't know if you have any other questions you have for, for me or or also as well uh questions that you have uh, across the board that you want to talk about I guess my final question would be like, what's the biggest objection that you face when you're in this proposal stage usually that comes to mind for you? ROI. Right now, uh, yeah, on. I would say ROI for sure. Like, because what happens is CFO comes out of nowhere, <laughs> right? Just swings in like, oh, hey, what up? And they're like, hey, what's ROI this? What's this? Da, da, da. So I like to add that at the, at the end. Uh, and however you want to do ROI is different for everyone, but I like to add in just like customer stories. So when I was in full-time sales training, uh, that's what I did. So I had like customer stories. And then because of certain industries like cybersecurity, for example, I did a ton of training for sales teams in cybersecurity. So I had a cybersecurity like section. It's like, here's the, here's the ROI and here are the companies we've worked with like that are in your space. And then it's like, we did this, we did that, et cetera. I would mix it. So I had infographics. I would have like the person's face and then a quote. Some of them would be videos and some of them would be regular text. So they got they got everything to know like this is legit. Now, as I'm starting my business, I have been collecting those. It's not as obviously well tuned out because I was doing sales training for like three and a half years, four years. So now I'm just doing the same process again, collecting results, putting it in proposals so people know the ROI is there. I know that a CFO is literally just going to be like, what are we getting? <laughs> How much does it cost? What's the ROI? These are three sections they're probably going to look at. So... <laughs> the biggest objection that you're going to get, especially in this environment, could change, but especially in this environment. And then I mentioned it earlier, the other objection you're going to get is from end users and uh, especially executives is like, how much time is this going to take my team? What is this going to take them away from? So when I said earlier, you need to do the time on stuff. I, I try to aim to do that as, as much as I can, because sometimes I give ranges because like it's hard to say this is going to take three hours unless you have been doing it a lot, which again, if you're starting something new, you don't know yet. So those are things that I would say there. Say there. Beautiful. That's very helpful. As somebody that's more on the marketing side of things, I don't have to deal with these objections quite as often. So I'm always curious about like <laughs> yeah. what comes in. It's like I tried multi-threading that CFO from the oh very beginning, gosh. but it, they kept declining my calendar invites. But now they're here. Now that it's like about to go across the finish line. But I think uh, my advice as well is like don't be you know don't be too uh, frustrated or uh, hopeless when it comes to that point. It's gotten gotten that far. Let's, let's see if we can make it happen. Exactly. Right. Like, people are asking about pricing. It's because they're already thinking about buying. Exactly. It's a good sign. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I like this quote. I'll leave it here uh, from Lindsay. One of my biggest takeaways today that I learned from you, Morgan, was like, it's not for the person you've already met with. It's for the key stakeholders that need their attention uh, when you're building out these proposals. So. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lindsay, and thanks for sharing that with me, Morgan. Yeah, you're welcome. Always keep that in mind across the board. Someone's question here is, what's been your feedback? What it, what exactly do you mean by that question? If you could elaborate, like, feedback on the video proposal, the feedback on the proposal we just made. We don't know yet. We just sent it out. <laughs> that, was a, that wasn't a real one, right? So uh, we got to figure out what exactly that, that meant there. I'm not sure I saw that one on my restream end but yeah it just says what's been your feedback on my i see it on my side at least oh, okay yeah, yeah. See that one yeah from nikelly yeah hope i'm saying your name right nikelly um i'm assuming maybe that's the video proposal i'm assuming that's what it means i've got nothing but incredible feedback from my video proposals people are like i've had multiple people when i send out uh, a video proposal or a video in, in embedded in my proposal oh, he's talking about on previous wins i think I'm just going to talk about my, my wins when it came to video proposals. Oh, but when yeah. People were like, dude, nobody's done that. Like talk about a pattern interrupt. It's a great way to stand out. I, I mean, look, I've closed my biggest deal ever. And that my dream client from video proposals. So I, I, this is not just something I'm just saying, cause it's cool. And it sounds like, Oh, this is exciting. Like no legitimately, like the biggest deals I've had 
biggest deal I've ever had. The dream client, it all came from just breaking it down from video proposals because I know that it got forwarded to other people that needed to be involved. And that's the key. You're going, you got to think about it. You're going up against other sales reps. It's not just you winning the deal. It's you're going up against like five other people probably. So if I can take the time to make a five to eight minute video and showcase who I am and articulate it and be very concise and show them the value of what it is without them having to, again, we said it earlier, I think it was, it was uh, I think it was Brandy said it, I think it's like your dad said it, the advice. You don't want people to assume things. You want to be very concise and clear. So the video proposal allows me to be even more clear than ever before. And so I look at the deals that I've won that have been big. I did a video proposal. I, I I use video in the sales cycle. So I'm like, why would I not use this every single time? <laughs> right. It's like, it's a, it's a basically a fault on my own if I don't. So that that's at least the wins I've seen on that side is using that video proposal and then adding in these dynamic in, images. So I'm, I believe that answered your question. If it didn't, we can go deeper, but that's what I would say. So I just wanted to add here at the end, as we're wrapping up, we're going to say goodbye in just a minute here. But if you want to learn step-by-step -step how to write a business proposal, you want to try it out with a PandaDoc template, feel free to visit our blog. Just literally type in Google. We do a great job of ranking super high, uh, but how to write a business proposal. I did put together a, a good long instructional video on how to do that here, step-by-step, section-by-section with screen shares. It's super thorough. Um, take your time to play around with it. the best way to get better at these, uh, writing proposals is actually to sit down and do them. Perfect. Um, awesome. So we answered that question. If anyone has any lasting questions, feel free to message us. Uh, hopefully you all found this session to be helpful on how to write a proposal, go about it. Maybe you got some new takeaways from this. That's the goal. I always tell people, if you listen to something, a webinar, a live stream, whatever, if you get one or two, three, one or two things out of it that you can go execute, it's well worth your time. So Hopefully y'all enjoy this. We'll see you all on the next one. Travis, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Morgan. Adios, everybody.